Hello and welcome to our five sessions of exercises based on the themes and characters in Lewis Carroll's book Alice in Wonderland. These will be mainly seated exercises, there will be some standing exercises too, but always with a seated alternative if you prefer to do those. So all you need is comfortable clothing and a bit of space to move around in and Rosa and Louisa will be leading the movement exercises in their homes. I'll be playing the piano and leading vocal and creative exercises from my home and we hope you enjoy it very much. We are going to begin today with a very gentle, easy, nice warm up to get our bodies moving before we begin delving into our Alice in Wonderland movement, okay? So before we start warming up with some music, let's just take a quick posture check. Um, so just having a little bit of a wiggle to begin with in your chair and feeling your sit bones pressing down, grounded into the chair and making sure we've got some space between the back of the chair and our back. So if you need to, just slightly rocking yourself forwards and finding that lovely tall spine, okay? Imagining we've got that string pulling us up to the ceiling, holding us nice and tall, good. And then just checking that our feet are in our parallel position. Our toes are pointing forward, our knees are pointing forwards. Okay, we've got that 90 degree angle in our legs. Good, and I'm feeling nice and grounded through your feet as well. So we've got that off position, that grounding through our feet and that rising and pulling up through our spine, all right? Okay, so let's just take a little bit of a warm up now. And I'd like to begin today by um, just having a bit of a squeeze, okay? So let's just take a bit of a squeeze on one arm. So moving around your arm here. And you can come onto your hands and squeeze your fingers. And you can um, apply as much pressure as you want, so whatever you feel like you need here. Good. And just coming up onto your shoulder, having a bit of a squeeze around your upper arm. Lovely. And just let that arm hang heavy now as you bring that pressure, that, that feeling and the pressing through, through the arm. And then when you're ready, we're going to have a brush through that arm. So just brush down. Brush. Good. In any way you want. Lovely. And just bring the other arm down. Good. And now let's just close our eyes and just see if you can feel that difference from one arm to the other. Is it starting to wake up? Is it feeling a little bit longer, a little bit more alive? Just noticing if there's any difference or if it feels the same. And when you're ready, just opening your eyes and let's come to the other side. So doing a similar thing, just waking, waking up that arm and maybe pressing through your fingers as well. Just whatever you need, however much pressure you want to, to put onto your arm, that's completely up to you, could be doing really soft um, amounts of pressure or you could be quite getting into some muscles there if you need that, good, and making sure you're coming up to your shoulder as well, yeah. giving it a bit of a rub on all the upper arms and down onto your hands, onto your fingers. And just as we did on the other side, let's take a bit of a brush, so just letting your arm hang heavy and just get what you need from that kind of massage into your arm. And when you're ready, we're gonna take a brush, and a brush, and a brush, and last one, brush. And just let both arms hang heavy there, and close your eyes, and again, just notice how your arms are feeling now. Are they feeling lovely and long and full of energy? Feeling a little bit more awake? And when you're ready, opening our eyes and we're just gonna lift our arms up 
and just imagine that rain is starting to fall. So coming onto our head with the tips of our fingers and just going through our hair onto our face, down across our cheekbones, onto our jaw, maybe behind on your neck and up on the front of your neck, maybe on your ears, just letting that that rain fall onto your face and coming down one up and up. It can be as far down as you want, all the way to your fingers or just onto your shoulders and just running across your chest. And let's have a bit of a pat on our chest, waking up. Good. And let's bring our hands across and we're going to have a whoosh out to the side. So we're going to send both of our arms out to the side after three. We've got one, two, three. Whoosh. Lovely. Let your arms float down. Let's do that again. One, two, three. Whoosh. Any noise you want, you can make. Here we go. Let's do that one last time. Coming across. One, two, three. Whoosh. And this time, float your arms up and let them fall down onto you, nice. And let's come to our legs. So just give your legs a little bit of a rub. So rubbing through one thigh, and again, doing whatever, whatever amount of pressure you would like today. So really massaging into it and giving your knee a little bit of a rub making some warmth go in there. I know it's a bit chilly at the moment, so maybe really, really rubbing around there, getting that warmth in, and down onto our calf. Just making that start to come awake a little bit. Let's have a bit of a pat. Coming up one leg. Good. That's it, all around the calf and the back. Back of the thigh, lovely. And when you're ready, we're just going to clasp our hands underneath our leg. And we're going to lift that leg up and really let go of the muscles in your leg. So just let your arms hold your leg here. Everything in your leg is nice and relaxed, nice and heavy. And after three, we're gonna drop that leg to the floor. Okay, one, two, three. And start to feel that tingling, everything waking up. Let's go to the other side, giving your leg a bit of a massage. That's it, moving through as much as you want. Bit of a squeeze in your thigh. Nice. And just getting some warmth in that knee, around the back of the knee as well. Warming that joint up, ready to get moving. And a bit of a squeeze down on your lower leg if you'd like, if you can. And then let's change that squeeze into a bit of a tap. Tapping up, waking everything up, that's it. All the way down and all the way up. You find the knee onto the calf from the back of the thigh, up to the hip. Waking everything up, lovely. And when you're ready, let's clasp our hands under our leg again, lifting up, feeling that that leg is really let go, everything's relaxed, all the muscles are nice and easy. And after three, we're gonna drop that, that foot to the ground. We've got one, two, three. And feeling everything nice and tingling and waking up through our legs now as well as our body is good. And let's just have a bit of a move through our torso now. So reaching forwards and pressing your tummy button to the back of the chair. And then we're going to lift up and press down. Good, now let's go up and bring our hands together. Bring them down to our thighs, through that midline, and then you're going to snake your head forwards, finding a nice long spine here, and let's go back. So retracing our steps to find that tall spine. Okay, let's do that again. Reaching forwards, tummy button to the back of the chair, lifting up, pressing down, and up. Drawing that through the midline, finding your thighs, pressing through with your spine, finding a nice tall straight spine, and retrace that, coming back through, and coming up, let's 
do that one more time, reaching forwards. Tummy button to the back of the spine, up the back of the chair, lifting up, pressing down. Lift up, hands touch, palms together, coming through, good. And let's just press through, your head is leading through here, finding that lovely long spine and tracing back through. Good. Sitting up. And now let's just have a bit of a free twist. And a twist. A twist. And twist. Keep that moving nice and slow. And gentle. Good. And let's just come back to the centre when you're ready. Having had that lovely twist through our torso, let's bring everything into a ball. So I want you to scrunch your fingers and your toes and every muscle in your face, okay? So just really scrunching yourself into a ball. And after three, we're going to explode and you can let everything go and just make whatever noise you want with that explosion. And your hands are gonna fly out to the side, okay? So making a big movement after three, but we're beginning in this scrunched up ball position, really scrunching everything together. One, two, three. Good, okay. And just coming back, finding that parallel position. In this exercise, we're going to be Alice, and Alice is just about to fall asleep, and then she falls into the rabbit hole. So just make sure you're sitting nice and tall in the front part of your chair and that the feet are under your knees there, heels under the knees. So we'll start with a sort of lovely dreamy border bra here, taking the arms to the side, into, uh, taking the arms into your first and then we'll open them into the side into your second. So finding that nice opening across your chest here. You're gonna step one foot to the side and then we'll go towards the leg. So just sweeping your arms, coming into a nice little twist towards the leg. And we're gonna take the arms back to the side and the foot back in. Stepping the other leg out and then we'll go towards that leg, sweeping the arms and then taking the arms back to the side and the foot back in. And we're gonna reach to the side. So really feel like you root down through your sit bones, finding that nice length, reaching the arm over, and then letting your spine curve as you release the arms forward, rolling up and sweeping the arms back to the side. We'll go to the other side. So reaching, reaching, reaching up and over, and then we're gonna curl, releasing the arms in front and then lengthening them back to the side. And now we're gonna start the fall. So we're gonna reach the arms up, and we're gonna, just let the feet come into like you would be running with your feet. I'm just gonna fall down with our arms. And we'll do that same border brow movement, but faster and slightly smaller with those moving feet. So we're gonna sweep the arms one way, uh, sweeping them the other way, reaching over and curving, and reaching the other way and curving. And then we're going to do some freestyle falling as you come over, rounding back, we're just going to go and let the body go, thinking about your falling, a bit of spiraling, sweeping, twirling the arms. Oh, and then we're gonna come back up into the seat and just take a few rocks from side to side. So the music changes a little bit here. And then we've now fallen down and we're gonna brush through one side. So really heavily push through the leg and drop. And then that same hand, we're gonna brush the dust off our dress. And we'll take that to the second side. So brushing the dust from the leg, drop. And then we're gonna brush it off the uh, dress. And there's a little bit of that, still that sense of falling and the movement being a little bit out of control. So we're gonna reach, you can rock towards one sit bone as you reach the arm out. We're gonna rock back and sweep across. And a nice big opening as you sweep back and reach towards the side there. And then we're gonna drop down. We're gonna take that to the other side. So you can rock from sit bone to sit bone, swing. A bit of a swinging move. Like you would wrap around and then we're gonna swing up and drop. Good. 
And then we're going to lengthen one leg. So flexing is like you're going to reach and think about, I want to get out of here, reaching as far as you can with a little twist. So one arm reaching back, one forward. Ah, then we'll release. Ah, oh, it's not going to work. We're going to take the other leg, coming into a flex, reaching the leg forward and reach one arm forward, one arm back. A little spinal twist here. And then ease. Ah, oh, it didn't help. We'll come back into that swingy movement. So making it even bigger, reach and across and reach and drop and we'll go reach and across and reach and drop and that's all let's do that with some lovely music that Nia's played for us sitting nice and tall in the front of the chair we'll go straight in with the music here we go first and open second step one leg out and reach across and back the other leg to the side, reach across. We'll go up and over, lengthen and round the spine curve. And the other way, and curve. Arms rise up and we'll start to fall. And faster twist. And the other way, up and over. And the other way. And then we'll do a bit of freestyle falling. Whoa. And here we go. Brush the dust and from your dress. The other side, brush and from your dress. We're gonna rock and reach side and reach. Drop the other side. Reach, 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 and release. The other way, flex it the foot, reach. And once more on that, rocking side, across, and drop, reach, and drop. Very good, great. We're just gonna do that one more time with the music. Here we go. First, and open second, Step one leg out and reach across and back. The other leg to the side, reach across. We'll go up and over, lengthen and round the spine curve. And the other way, and curve. Arms rise up and we'll start to fall. And faster twist. And the other way, up and over. And the other way. And then we'll do a bit of freestyle falling. Whoa. And here we go. Brush the dust and from your dress. The other side, brush and from your dress. We're gonna rock and reach side and reach. Drop the other side. Reach, 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 and release. The other way, flex it the foot, reach. And once more on that, rocking side, across, and drop, reach, and drop. Very good. Our challenge for our term on Alice in Wonderland is to learn a song which we're going to sing about the Mad Hatter's Tea Party. And uh, in that song, we're going to have some of the characters who appear in this bizarre tea party in the book. So we're going to sing, appropriately enough, to the tune of Tea for Two. And each week, we'll do a little section of the song. And at the end of term, hopefully, we'll be able to sing right through the song and I'll be able to provide words for you uh, on the screen so that you can follow along if, probably like me, you can't remember them. Okay, so this week we're going to go over the Mad Hatter's verses. Uh, and the Mad Hatter can be any voice you like, really, but give him quite a forthright voice 
And let's practice the muscles we're going to use for that voice by saying the word hatta. And if you put your hands just by your rib cage there and really force out that ha sound and then kick that T against your teeth with your tongue, we can see how forceful we can make that word hatta. So we want to be pushing your hands out with the ha and really kicking out the consonant with your tongue. So, ready? One, two, three, hatta. And again, one, two, three, hatta. So here comes the hatta's verse. And we'll do some little moves with each verse as well. So, just doing the words first of all without the tune. And the hatta in the book talks about Alice needing a haircut. That's the first thing he says to her rather rudely. Uh, so his first verse, we're going to start with, with the lyrics of the song itself. And we're going to say T for two, and put a saucer out in front of us. T for two, and two for T, and two for T with the teacup. And then the next line, which we're going to add in a sort of Alice in Wonderland way, is three for you and four for me. As you lift the cup up to your mouth and back again. So those two lines, T for two and two for T, three for you and four for me. Let's give it a go. And let's sing it along, actually. So you can sing any key you like. I won't be able to hear you, so that's fine. Or if you don't know the tune or you don't fancy singing, just say the words in rhythm. Okay, so here we go. And T for two and two for T, three for you and four for me. And then the next line is, you deserve a haircut, I can see. Okay, so, and you deserve a haircut, I can see. And then because T for two is often done as a cha-cha, we'll put in a little bit of a cha-cha move with snip, snippy, snip, 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 snippy, snip. Okay, okay, so that verse all together and T for two, T for two and two for T, three for you, three for you and four for me, you deserve a haircut. You deserve a haircut, I can see. Snip, snippy, snip, 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 snippy, snip. Excellent. And don't panic if you can't follow, just go back over it again and we'll do it again next week as well. Okay, so the next verse for the Mount Hatter. Now this refers to two things he says in the book. One of them is that he wants a cleaner cup and so his suggestion is that all the guests move up one, which seems quite a sane suggestion to me. I'd be inclined to do that as well. Uh, and the other one is that he takes out his pocket watch and it's running two days late because the March Hare has advised him to put butter in the works. Okay, so this is our verse based on those two eccentric quotes in the book. So it starts. I would like a cleaner cup. And we're going to bring back the cup and saucer, but instead of lifting it to our lips, we're going to look up at that dirty cup and put it down. So that goes. I would like a cleaner cup. Once more. And I would like a cleaner cup. And then the next line is everybody Please move up, shove them out of the way. Everybody, please move up with the gestures and everybody, please move up. And then we do the pocket watch section and we're going to mind taking this old fashioned pocket watch out of the pocket, looking at it, tapping it and then shaking it to see what's going on as the Mad Hatter does in the book. And the words we're going to say with that are, I'll be two days late. My watch is buttered. Not quite what it says in the book, but it'll do for us. I'll be two days late. My watch is buttered. Say with me. 
I'll be two days late, my watch is battered. Okay, that whole verse now. So we've got, I would like a cleaner cup. Everybody, please move up. I'll be two days late, my watch is buttered. I would like a cleaner cup, are we ready? And, I would like a cleaner cup. Everybody, please move up. I'll be two days late, my watch is buttered. Fantastic. Okay, now then, see if you can follow the whole of those two verses, and we'll do them again next week. Here we go. So the first line is T for two, and T for two, and two for T, three for you and four for me. You deserve a haircut, I can see. Snip, snippy, snip, 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 snippy, snip. I would like a cleaner cup. Everybody, please move up. I'll be two days late, my watch is battered. Thank you very much and we'll carry on with that song next week. So in this exercise we're going to be the rabbit and we'll think about that he's very busy, uh, rushing around and there's that idea of the clock ticking um, as well. So this is quite a coordination and it gets faster and faster so you can stick with the slower variation throughout if you like. So we're going to start by thinking about taking that clock from our pocket and looking and then we're going to take at the other hand as we would do our rabbit ear then that clock hand we're going to bring it into our mouth as it look oh dear it's already that late and then we're going to swap so the hand in front of your mouth is going to come as into your ear and then the ear hand is going to become your paw so that's clock to ear, clock hand to your mouth, and then swapping ear and paw. Let's do that again. So we're gonna go hand and ear, and then into the mouth, and swap once more, a little bit faster. We're gonna go clock to ear to mouth, and swap again, clock to ear to mouth, and swap. Okay, so that's the pattern. In between, you're going to think about making the clock. So it doesn't matter if you want to mirror me and you end up going counterclockwise. But we think about stepping the feet one side and uh, clapping to the side. So that's sort of our three o'clock. We're going to take the feet back to the center and clap down to go six. We'll go to the other side, clap to the side to go nine, and then all the way arms up to 12 as you take your feet back to center. So that pattern is side, three, two, go, center, and down, two, go, side, and clap, two, go, center, and up to take it back into the clock, to ear, to mouth, and swap. So ear and paw, to go clock, and ear, and mouth, and change. But the thing is, in the first round, this one is very slow. Then we'll do the clock. We'll come back to, so we do a few rounds of the hand movements. We'll do the clock, then it becomes a bit faster. We'll do the clock and then it becomes really fast. And if it's too fast, you're gonna stay because you have the same music. So the rhythm stays, stays same. We're just gonna speed up the movement. So you can go slower if you like. Let's try that with some music. Okay, here we go. Ready? Starting with the clock. Straight in the music. And ear. And mouth. And swap. Again. Clock. Ear. And mouth. Change. Now into that big clock. And clap. It's six. To nine. Now slightly faster. And ear, mouth, swap. Ear, mouth, swap. Back to clock. Down. And now super fast. We'll go mouth, swap. And once more. Last. Oh, that's good. 
getting so fast. I think we should do that one more time with the music. Okay, okay here we go. Ready? Starting with the clock. Straight in the music. And ear. And mouth. And swap. Again. Clock. Ear. And mouth. Change. Now into that big clock. And clap. Slightly faster. And ear, mouth, swap. Ear, mouth, swap. Back to clock. Down. And now super fast. We'll go. Mouth, swap. And that's so hard. Last. Oh, that's we are going to do a quick uh, exercise now that you can follow along with where we'll just get the feet moving a little bit before we come up to stand today for those of us that would like to do so. So just follow along with me. Um, we'll have some gorgeous music playing too and just have a little bit of a move through our feet, okay, to get us ready for standing, making sure our feet are in parallel position. Here we go. Gonna start with a bit of march, hands on hips, we've got a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, tap. like to remain seated that's completely fine please do just stay where you are there will be a seated variation um, of all the exercises we do standing so please do um, continue to join us but for those of you that would like to stand just bringing your feet slightly under and um, using your hands to press through your thighs to come up to standing good so it would be a great opportunity now for you to go and maybe get a glass of water or have a quick and um, two minute break if you need to and um, before we come to our plies Great, so now that you've had a little bit of a break and hopefully some water, um, we will carry on with the standing portion of the class. So um, just for those of you that are standing, finding a chair because we're going to come to our plie now. So just finding um, the, maybe the chair that you were sitting on and making sure your feet are in parallel position and that you can use this as a bit of support for the next exercise. We are going to do a plie now and it is 
based on um, Alice thinking about that um, moment after she's fallen down the rabbit hole and she ends up in a room where she drinks some liquid and eats some cake and grows and shrinks um, and all sorts of strange things happen. So um, in this plie we're thinking about that idea of growing and expanding and then coming into smaller movements and taking up less space um, and reaching for things that are too high up for us to get. Okay, so let's get going. Just finding your feet in parallel position behind your chair and we begin with our hands on the chair. And we're going to take one hand off to start with and this you might recognise from our Alice Pour de Bralis movement. We're going to let one hand drop down beside our leg and reach it up the side of us and come over, tilting over to one side. And then as you do that, there can be a slight bend in your knees as you roll forward. See your spine slightly curved here. And then as you straighten your knees, your spine straightens too. And from there, we're going to take a rise through our feet and then if you'd like to release one hand off the chair and reach really high as so you're trying to reach something on a table or something that you can't reach and then come back down and let that arm come down to the chair okay so when we're reaching with that hand really splaying through our fingers we're really going to the extreme and reaching as much as possible through that arm we take that all on the other side. So the other hand releases down. We trace that arm up to the ceiling and let our bodies curve over, taking a bend through our knees as our torso curves over and then rolling up through the spine, taking a rise through our feet and really reaching, 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 splaying those fingers and coming down, finding the chair with that hand again and our feet are in parallel. So from there, we're taking our feet into a slightly wider second position and we do that in two stages. So you're going to point one foot out to the side and just draw it in slightly and place it down. And then we do the same with the other foot, draw in, um, point one foot out to the side, draw that foot in slightly and place it down. So we're in a comfortable second position, okay? And then you're going to transfer your weight into one leg. So you're bending one knee, transferring over. And as you do that, you're reaching with one hand. And here we're thinking about really growing in the space around us. And then we go to the other side, transferring our weight over. And then the other side, but this time reaching up towards the ceiling. And again, reaching up towards the ceiling. And then finding the center of that position in our legs. You're going to bring your palms together and press through and as we do that we're going to take a plie good and making sure our, our bottom is nicely tucked in nothing's poking out okay everything's nicely in line plie and stretch here and then a very gentle rise and lower okay so let's just recap that all really quickly we're in parallel position reaching one hand up to the side curving over lifting up we're rising through our feet reaching and lower everything down other side reaching up coming over curving the spine straightening those legs rising through your heels reaching and everything coming down opening out to your second other foot to second and we reach and reach and reach and reach Palms come together, weight comes to the centre of our legs. Plie, find the chair, and we rise and lower. Okay, from there we're going into a little bit of a sway from side to side. So we prepare for this by transferring our weight onto one foot um, after our rise there. And our arms for this are going to come across our body and be kind of... Um, going, moving horizontally. So you're switching them in front of you. One arm curves as it comes in front 
and the other one opens to the side. And there's a slight twist in your torso. So letting that front shoulder come um, forwards here. Okay, so we've got eight um, sways like this that are really big and swooping, okay? So using as much space as you can, or as much as you've got, to really eat all of that space in front of you. And then we're thinking about coming into that small body and that small movement. So we're gonna have eight really gentle, slow, little sways. And you can use your arms. Just imagine that you're kind of you know, brushing the grass or something with your fingers here really gentle and um, the movement through your legs is much more kind of going through that plie and pressing up so really feeling that strength as you move through the center there okay so we've got eight of these slower smaller sways and then we go back to our big um, eating all the space sways for eight okay Right, five, six, and a seven, eight. And then we come back to the chair to find that parallel position. And we repeat the first section. So we're reaching one arm up and curving over the chair, rolling through the spine, rising through the feet, reaching and lowering on the side, Lifting up and over, plie through the legs, coming up. And we rise, really reach, and let everything come down to finish, okay? Let's give that all a go with some music now, okay? So making sure we're beginning in our parallel position, hands are on the chair for those of us that are standing, and we're starting by releasing that one arm to come up, around, and over. Have a bit of an introduction to start with. Feeling that leg through that spine. And releasing one hand, reach, and over. Bending those knees, straighten up, and we rise. Bending through your knees, curling, rolling up, and we rise, and reach, and lowering down, good, pointing one foot, placing it down, other side, down, and we reach, and reach, and reach, and reach, find the centre of that position, pressing through. Finding the chair rising up to lift through the heels up and lower. Prepare for our swing and we swing. Two. Nice and big. Good. Back to our slow. Using that plie through your necks. Letting those arms swing gently. And back to our big swing, 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 twisting that shoulder around, using as much space as you can, good, coming back to the chair, we reach your one hand up, over, and breathe, down, and we rise, and reach, and lower, exercise we're going to think about water and there's a little bit of a, that water theme throughout the Alice in Wonderland story. So water is used to represent some of the situations um, that Alice encounters during her time in Wonderland and that um, most obvious one is the one where she's crying so much that she's creating this lake or pool of water. So just going to think about the element of water and that sort of soft flowy uh, 
nature and feel of the water and then trying to just uh, express that through our movement and we have some lovely music for this. It's a bit more freestyle this exercise. So if you have a scarf or a tea towel um, that you could use for this one. So if you are doing this, uh, following this video from your home, so you can just pause and go and get um, a towel or something. And you can do it without, just imagine that it's just nicer to have a little bit more expression to the movement with that prop. So although um, I'm going to demonstrate this as a standing exercise, you can always do this seated as well. So I'm just going to show in a moment how uh, some options of how you can adapt this and do it uh, seated. So we're going to just find a sort of wider stand and we'll just go through a few things together and then I'll allow you to just go and explore the movement and the music uh, as you like. So it's a bit more of improvisation and freestyle but we'll start with just to have a look at the, the movement and that swaying sense through the legs. So if you start to shift your weight from side to side keeping the knees bent so there's that sort of like a swinging a bit like a waltzy sense almost on your uh, legs. So we're gonna start by just keeping the feet nice and wide and if you like you can add a little bit of movement so you can explore up and down maybe a figure of eight. Good. And then taking that scarf to the other arm, the hand, exploring. Good. So that's how we can all start together. Now, if you keep your legs going, we're going to take, I'm not going to say right and left, but if you want to mirror me, we're going to take this side leg forward. So it's going to go diagonal and you can keep that same swinging movement. We'll go shifting your weight forward and back forward. Next, as you come back, just sliding that leg to the side so you don't have to stop the movement at all. We're just gonna change the direction slightly. Now, next time you're gonna come onto this side, we're gonna just step slightly backwards and keeping that. So you can see that it's quite nice if you can keep that rhythm, then we're going to come back to the side, side, going that way. And then we're going to change sides. So next time as you shift your weight here, taking this leg forward. So we'll keep nothing changed. And then as you come back to this leg, take this leg to the side. So it's easier to do it in that rhythm rather than trying to stop and analyze. It's keeping your body going. Now next one here, we'll go backwards. Keeping that rhythm, good. And then we're gonna go side and that way side. Good. And then we're gonna go side and back to the front. To see, keeping the legs going, okay. Have a little break, good. So then you can cut the repetitions. If you just keep your legs going, we can go, you can have a little feel at home. We're gonna go side to the front. Another one maybe to the front, to the side. We're gonna go side. And then we're going to go side and that way back, keeping that side to side, side to front. So nothing else moves, you just keep that rhythm to the side and to the back, maybe, and to the side. And then you can always change sides. And then you can take that into just the one step keeping that direction and as you start to feel that if you think like that's my anchor point here I can then st start moving my body as well and keeping their legs going maybe even moving the space have a little go and then you can go the other way and nothing else moves so just keep that lovely bouncy swingy sense you can move in the space if you like and if that's all too much, just keep that in place and we're going to add some arm movements. <laughs> Good. Let's have a little pause here. So we're going to start uh, together with the music. So it's going to go side to side first with a little movement of the scarf, starting low and then we'll take it a little bit higher up. So you can just 
do what feels good with the arm so you can follow me and we're going to do some figures of eight and then we're going to go into those directions and we're going to do let's go to each direction and then we're going to change sides and just follow me or if you want to do need feel like you need to do more in one direction that's absolutely fine and then that just lets you go free and if you just like to keep the basic stay on your side that's absolutely fine so now if you'd like to stay seated for this exercise uh, I'm not going to uh, have a separate video for this because I want you to just explore and go a bit more freestyle so you can do those arm movements and you have a little bit more possibilities maybe here as you're seated and you may feel a little bit more secure on your seat you can go bigger with the movements and smaller and then you can change sides and you feel comfortable just creating a little bit of that rocking sense from sit bone to sit bone and if it feels good you can even here move the legs and the feet as feels good so just rocking side to side maybe just lifting the feet or maybe just moving them a little bit with your movement so I uh, let you to explore that uh, with the music as we'll do that standing so let's put the music on and just follow me and there is no right way so just keeping that swinging going we're going to do a few rounds together and then you can just explore uh, explore it so having your scarf on your hand start creating that sway and here we go starting low first together like to come on to your chair so just take your time again feeling the chair behind it's going to turn this way so you can see that feeling the chair on the back of the legs sending your sit bones back and slowly slowly lower down good and then just placing the feet forward so it's going to do a little cool down uh, to some music follow me so arms to the side Let's start like with a, with a warm up, rolling the shoulders slowly. And again. And once more here. Good. And always 
just gonna let the spine round curve through your spine and think like you're, something's pulling from the mid back towards the chair rolling up and then opening your chest like you have that lovely sunshine shining on the chest and lengthening up good just lengthen one leg forward flexing the foot that you pull the toes towards you we're going to reach the opposite arm forward and the other arm back coming into a little twist reach like we did it with our alice exercise and then release taking that to the other side lengthen flexing the foot then reaching the opposite arm forward and the other arm back Feel that length through your midline and release good lengthening the arms to the side we're going to open one leg again from our Alice movement coming into a gentle sway twist here just going slowly opening the arms closing the leg going to open the other side and coming into that gentle spiral to the other side and coming up easing the arms scooping up one arm <coughs> again like you paint that rainbow over your head and coming back, release the arm. Let's take it the other way. Reaching up and over. And coming back. And release, good. Just gonna take one arm up. Now just gonna bend the elbow, touch your, any way you can uh, on the back of the shoulder there on neck. And reaching with the other arm, so you can get a nice length stretch through the arm there. Here we can get open that other elbow to the side. And releasing down. Taking the other hand, walking the fingers where it work for you. You can use the other arm to lengthen. Or open the elbow to the side to get that nice stretch on the back of the arm. Sweeping the arms up. And then we're going to open them to the side. There again. Sweeping forward. And big opening to the side. One more time in. Forward. Opening. And this time we're just going to give ourselves a big cuddle. Sweeping one arm across. And the other, like you give yourself a hug. Let's do a little twist here with a hugging position. Finding your center and one big opening with the arms to the side. And lowering down. Good. And just take a nice deep breath in. And exhale out. Very good. Lovely. Thank you for joining us again this week. We'll hope to see you again next time.